Hey, this is Ryan Thomas. I help rejected parents rebuild the relationship with their children. And in this video, I wanna give you a really simple understanding of what parental alienation is. Parental alienation is when a child is told that they have a good parent and a bad parent, and they are forced to choose and align themselves with the good parent and the bad parent, everything that that parent tries to do to be involved in their life is looked at as bad and wrong. And typically we see this come to light at the time of divorce or a custody proceeding. And simply what happens is when there is anger and frustration and resentment, the child is used as a weapon against the other parent. And that other parent will turn the child against the other loving parent. They will tell them that they aren't good, they aren't loving, they don't want you, they don't want us, they abandoned us, they left us, they're trying to hurt us. And they will align themselves with the child that says, I am the parent you can depend on. I am the parent that you can love. I'm the only parent that loves you. That other parent does not love you, does not care about you. I'm the only one that you can depend on. And what they will do is use that relationship to make the child feel like they can only have one parent in their life. And when this happens, they insert stories into the child's mind about what that other parent feels about them. They'll say, the other parent doesn't love you. They don't care about you. They abandoned you. They abandoned us. And that child trusts that parent and starts to believe it. They may feel uncomfortable about it. They may say, no, I want to love both of you, but they feel intimidated because that parent that they now feel is the only one that's looking out for them, how can they go against them? And then the more and more that happens and that parent is constantly reinforcing, I'm the only one for you, they feel like, well, I can't upset my, my, my good parent I can't tell them that I want to see or talk to the bad parent because that's bad and wrong. And even if they do have moments where they talk to them, they feel guilty, they feel ashamed, they feel dirty, and that becomes a dirty little secret. And then they're constantly filled with chaos and turmoil, internal conflict of wanting to love naturally both parents, but feeling like they can't. And what happens is, that parent who is doing the alienating is so able to warp and manipulate that child's impressionable mind that anything they say, now that child has those lenses on and they see the world through this belief that one good parent, the other parent is a bad parent. And so now anything they do is twisted and turned as something that see, that's where they're wrong, that's where they're bad, that's where they don't care. So you have a situation where a parent may try to, who after a divorce or custody, still wants to be involved in the child's life. They'll show up at events, they'll try to buy things, they'll try to stay engaged with the child. And that, that parent, that alienating parent will take the child and say, no, 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 look at that, they're trying to control you. They're trying to dominate you. They're trying to not give you any privacy. They don't care about what you want. They only care about what they want. You try it. That other parent tries to assert themselves. No, 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 I want a relationship. I love you. And they say, oh, and I want to see you. And they say, they're so narcissistic. They only care about themselves. They don't even care about what you want. Meanwhile, that child becomes more and more shrinked and, and locked in. At whatever age, they start going, oh, I, I understand this. No matter what that parent says, I have to push that away. Okay, so then the parent who is just absolutely reeling, the alienated parent who's reeling from all of this, having the child reject them, says, okay, well, maybe I'll step back. Maybe I'll withdraw. Maybe I'll take a break. And then the child is told and believes they're abandoning you. They don't care about you. They're, they're, they don't want to see you. They don't want to talk to you. They're moving on with their life. They've left us. And the child, instead of feeling and being told, okay, they're giving you some space, there's no credit given. So that parent who, who is alienated is damned if they do and damned if they don't. 
And so what happens as this progresses over and over and this once loving relationship is further and further and further apart and no matter what they try, the child pushes away and rejects and is angry and is yelling no matter what or regresses into silence and doesn't communicate, the more that that happens, the parent on the receiving end of this, the alienated parent, is understandably upset. Where is my relationship gone? Why are you believing lies? Why are you believing manipulation? Why, 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 why? They become emotional. And of course, nobody in life is perfect. And so then that parent who has been alienated, will the emotions may sometimes get the best of them. And they may say or do something in, in a feeling of, of desperation and helplessness. And then once again, that other parent who's doing the alienating says, look at how much chaos, look at how terrible they are, look at how awful they are, look at how much stress. If we just cut this relationship off, you won't have to deal with any of that. And so it's a mixture of, of lies and falsehoods and manipulation. And then an imperfect parent can often come in and make a mistake because imagine that your worst emotional moment where you're reacting and you feel like your life is turned upside down. Imagine that one reaction or that one word or that one cry or that one plea is captured and then put on loop. The worst moment of you realizing you've lost your child or the child is slipping away, they will take that moment. Sometimes they capture it on photo, sometimes they capture it on video, sometimes they just make sure that that child never forgets that one moment of, of instability, of emotion, of raw emotion. And they will then once again pair that with the story and say, look at what that other parent did. Look at how they disrespected you. Look at how they did this to you. And then what happens next is they will say, that person brings such chaos and stress and anxiety to your life, but it's not just them. It's everyone that's associated with that other parent. You can't trust any of them. You can't trust that other parent and you can't trust grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles and you should probably stay away from cousins and friends. And so what they do is they will isolate the child from everyone else who loves them. And that child then becomes more and more dependent on the parent who's doing the alienating because now they've lost grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, friends, other people who can be a good positive influence, somebody who can say, give, give the child, give your other parent a chance. They love you. This is a stressful time. We're all still here to love you regardless of what happens. They lose that entire support system. And probably the worst piece of all of this for parents who are going through a, a court case or a custody battle or counseling or reunification counseling or dealing with school or um, sports uh, clubs and organizations is that that one parent who's doing the alienating will make sure that they get in and they talk to all of those people and they will re re uh, re say uh, retell all of the stories just want to let you know that my child's other parent very unstable really uh, upsets the child um, she he or she abandoned us um, and and the child doesn't want anything to do with them so please keep the communication this way because and they will poison everybody else courts counselors reunification therapists and other people in the child's life like school and teachers and administrators, they will poison all of those people, even friends and family neighbors, they will poison them against that other parent. So what does that do to the child? Once again, wow, it's not just that one parent that says the, 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 um, that the bad parent is bad and did all these things. But now principal so-and-so and Mr. So-and-so and coach so-and-so and all of these people, they don't like mommy or daddy either. And that becomes a third party endorsement. And what happens when a story is repeated over and over and then everybody else to that child is believing it and repeating it over and over to that child, it becomes truth. 
it becomes the new normal. It becomes the accepted reality. And then that emotional toll of, wow, I have a parent that doesn't want me. I have a parent that doesn't care about me. I have a parent that, that wants to, to hurt me and do bad things to me. When they feel isolated like that and they have no one else, they will continue to push that parent away and go closer to the parent who is doing the alienating. And meanwhile, oftentimes, what happens is the parent who is doing the alienating is projecting all of that. They are the ones who are controlling or narcissistic. They are the ones that are demanding. They are the ones that say, it's my way or the highway. And because that child intuitively knows and feels that stress and that anxiety, they understand what that feels like. It's very easy to project so that all of a sudden when we're having our happy life, as long as you do exactly what I say and reject all of these other people and accept the lies, everything is wonderful. But then, oh no, this other parent has shown up to school, to a concert, to an event. Oh no, they're going to destroy everything. And that child's anxiety goes up. And they say, I don't want you here. I don't want you here. Meanwhile, the, the, the alienated parent says, well, I'm here to love you. I, I, I love you. I miss you. I, I want to be with you. Why are you doing this to me? And what does the child say? The child will parrot, parrot the words of the alienating parent. Well, if you hadn't left us, if you hadn't abandoned us, if you hadn't cared about work as much as you did, if you hadn't chosen this other life, if you hadn't done these things, then we would be together. So it's your fault. Don't make me feel bad about it. You're the bad person. I own, this is my family now. And then that parent goes off and tries, that alienating, alienated parent goes off and tries to find support from teachers, from coaches. Hey, can I talk to you about my kid? And they go, uh, we know the story about you. We're not talking to you. They go to other family and friends and they say, this is what's going on. And people say, well, that's too bad you don't have a relationship with your kid. But I mean, this kid won't even talk to you. It's been weeks or months or years. Surely you did something wrong. Surely you're to blame somehow. And it makes that alienated parent feel like they have no one. Which, of course, creates more anxiety and emotion and desperation. And the situation continues to cycle through. Unless there are people who are willing to recognize and look deeper beyond the stories. And look deeper beyond, well, sure, when people get divorced, there's strife. No. Parental alienation is when you are systematically programmed. The child is systematically programmed to reject one parent and lovingly accept the other parent. At all costs, regardless of what the child will think and feel, that is simply put in a box and, and kept under wraps. And as this goes on longer and longer and longer, the child feels less power, less ability to step out and say, hey, I know all this stuff is going on, but I really like to go and spend some time with that other parent. I'd really like to talk to them or call them or text them or email. They stop asking because they know that's not right. Bad, bad, bad. So they stop. And then just like Stockholm Syndrome, you know what you got to do to get by to keep the status quo, to keep everybody happy, to keep that parent know that, oh, I love you and you love me and we're all, we're in this together and we're the only ones that we can depend on. And so that child becomes a watered down shell of themselves who is filled with anger and frustration. And when that happens and they don't know where to go with it, you see behavioral issues, you see uh, trouble at school, trouble in sports, health issues, Sometimes suicidal thoughts, hurting themselves. And what happens when that child is, is struggling and can't express themselves? And they're brought to a therapist or they're brought to somebody who could help. And because they can't see through everything I just described to you, the easy answer is that other bad parent, if they would just go away, everything would be fine. If they would just stop trying to send birthday cards and Christmas cards and trying to say they love you and trying to say they miss you and trying to have parenting time, it would all go away and that child would feel better. And it's a lie. 
It's not true. The, the lie is that the child, is their true desires and emotions have been buried by a parent who is hell-bent on revenge and believes truly that they are the best and only parent for that child. And they will do everything at all costs to make sure that that is the relationship that stays and everything else goes away, come hell or high water. And unfortunately, it comes at the expense of the child. I say this from my own personal experience, being that child who believed that I had only one good parent and one bad parent, being forced to choose, and then everything that was either made up about my parent or because my parent would make a mistake or say something or do something wrong, like most people, instead of it being a little problem or a little setback, it was blowing up into something huge and awful that made me as a child feel like I wasn't good enough. There must be something wrong with me that I have a parent that, that wants to hurt me, that doesn't want to love me, that doesn't care about anything that I want or anything that I do. And that damage to the child and to their self-worth and their ability to speak out and to have a voice is so forever uh, damaged that it, until later in life, before they even realize and can start to unpack all of this like I did, it is so damaging. And then you have to deal with the reality of what's been done to you. And so your whole life as a child, and now I am an adult of this and have reconciled with that other parent and see what's happened, I have to go back and look at and unpack everything in my life, growing up believing that I only had one good parent and one bad parent, only being able to have a relationship with one side of the family and having to destroy the relationships over here, and having parent, a grandmother who passed away and never finding that resolution because I rejected her. The lifelong implications of parental alienation are so strong, and unless you know what's going on and you can see it and you can look for signs of it and you have somebody who's willing to look deeper and not just accept the surface story, this damage will continue to go on and on and on. Now it's my mission to help that parent who's being rejected to find ways to change that programming, to find ways to get the child to realize that not that that other parent is wrong and bad because that will spark too much guilt and loyalty, but to recognize that that parent can be right, but the alienated parent can also be right. You can love both. You don't have to choose. It's not a competition. And to find the right words and actions to help change that behavior. And yes, also work with that parent who's been damaged and abused by the parental alienation and help them find a better sense of their self, to not make mistakes that are like traps that have been, been set for them, and to show up as the most true and loving and authentic person that they are so that child can see and remember who they had as a parent and who they still have as a parent. And the one last thing that I will leave you with is every alienated parent who is supposed to be so bad and awful and controlling and narcissistic, every parent that I have come across if given the opportunity, they are absolutely fine. As long as they can have a relationship, they want the child to have a relationship with both parents. They, are, they just say, give me a chance. Let me have an opportunity to have a relationship. The kid can have two parents. So that's the, the truly sad part about it, is that you have some parents that have completely unselfish love and know there's enough love to go around. And then there's others that are, have a selfish love, and there can only be one. So I hope this helps. I hope this gives you some insights. Um, and uh, again, I'm Ryan Thomas. I thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you on another video.